video is about pathophysiology of hypertension in pregnancy, which is a very important viva question in exam. Now, the question arises, what is the most important component causing preeclampsia? It is very important to remember that preeclampsia is in fact the disease of pregnancy and is related to the presence or absence of placenta. Okay, so placenta is a very important component. Okay, because fetus and uterus seems to be unimportant in this regard as preeclampsia is known to be present in patient with a complete hydratiform mole. Okay, in complete hydratiform mole, you know that the fetus is absent and in abdominal pregnancy because uh, in abdominal pregnancy, uterus is not involved. So even in that cases, the preeclampsia is found to be present. Okay, so it means that basically the pathophysiology uh, in the pathophysiology of preeclampsia, the important component is that of the placenta. Now, what is the basic etiology causing the preeclampsia? I would like to say that the exact etiology of preeclampsia is still unknown. But according to the current understanding, it is the disease of widespread endothelial damage. You can see from the figures that we have widespread endothelial damage. So the key word widespread endothelial damage needs to be remembered. Basically, in preeclampsia, we have primary placental pathology and most of its signs are due to secondary involvement of the other uh, systems. Okay, so basically we have primary placental pathology, first of all. Secondly, we have secondary influence of uh, the preeclampsia, I mean involvement of the other organ system. Now, what causes the linkage between the placental pathology and other system? That is still unclear, but possibly there are certain inflammatory agents which result in endothelial damage within the placenta and in all other body organs involved in the disease process. Now, if somebody asks that enumerate few, few inflammatory agents, so uh, those inflammatory agents are possibly uh, the increased uh, free fatty acids deranged lipoprotein, increased oxidative stresses, increased cytokine production and coagulation uh, activation and leukocytes activation. Now we need to discuss the primary placental pathology because only in that way we will understand the pathophysiology and it is said that preeclampsia is the disease of placenta and Two pathological lesions have been recognized in the placenta of the woman suffering from disorders. So what are those two pathologies which involve the placenta basically? Those are first of all the lack of second wave of trophoblastic invasion that we will discuss and second is acute atherosis. So these two things, these two pathologies in the placenta causes preeclampsia. So first we will discuss the lack of second wave of trophoblastic invasion. Secondly, we will discuss acute atherosis. So first of all, lack, lack of second wave or trophoblastic invasion. Before going in much detail, I would like to tell you about the difference between the utero-placental circulation and other adult arteries. Okay, what happens that uh, utero-placental circulation is uh, unlike any other adult arteries. Okay, it is different from other adult arteries because it lacks microcirculation, unlike the adult arteries. Okay, we don't have any arterioles, we don't have any capillaries, venules. Hence, the spiral arteries are the end arteries. Okay, these are end arteries, okay, uh, in the utero placenta circulation and more than 100 spinal arteries deliver uh, 500 ml per minute of the blood normally required at the end of a term pregnancy directly into intravascular space. This is very important point to remember, okay, that spiral arteries are basically the end arteries. Now, the question arises that what happens normally? You can see from this figure that extra was extra villus trophoblasts are found outside the uterus and can be subdivided into endovascular and interstitial categories. Endovascular trophoblasts invade and transform the spiral arteries during pregnancy to create the low resistance blood flow that is characteristic of placenta and interstitial trophoblasts invade the decidua and surround the spiral artery. In other words, I would like to say that in normal pregnancy, the spiral arteries of placental bat undergoes a series of physiological changes. 
okay and these are invaded by cytotrophoblast of placenta which break down the endothelium interstitial elastic lamina and muscular coat of the vessels which are largely replaced by fibrinites virtually every spiral arteries in the decidua basalis uh, will have undergone these physiological changes okay so we have first wave autotrophoblastic invasion and vascular damage by the and of the first trimester as you can see from the figure now early in the second trimester a second wave of trophoblastic invasion occurs and transform the myometrial segment of the spiral arteries and occasionally the distal segment of the radial arteries you can also see this figure okay so these physiological changes convert the vessel supplying the placenta from muscular and arteries to wide mouth sinusoids you can see from the figure the second wave of trophoblastic invasion is usually completed by 18 weeks of gestation okay first uh, wave by the first trimester second wave by the 18 weeks of gestation and the vascular supply is thus transformed from high pressure and low flow system to a low pressure high flow system to meet the needs of fetus and placenta okay this is what happens normally and the loss of endothelial and muscular uh, layer render these vessel unresponsive to vasomotor stimuli now coming to pathology that what happens in preeclampsia in preeclampsia only one half to two third of the decidual spiral arteries undergo these physiological changes and the conversion of myometrial component of the spiral arteries fail to occur even in the vessels where decidual segments have undergone physiological changes thus the primary invasion of the trophoblast is partially impaired and the secondary wave fail to occur now this um, quantitative and qualitative restriction of the normal physiological changes results in restricted restricted placenta blood flow which becomes more critical with advancing gestation as demand of the conceptus increases in addition these vessels maintain their muscular coat and so remain sensitive to vasomotor stimuli now why is 20 week limit used in defining preeclampsia okay the 20 weeks of gestation limit is used in the definition of preeclampsia that is perhaps because the lack of the second wave of trophoblastic invasion that is which is recognized after its normal time of completion that is 18 weeks now let us discuss the acute atherosis okay The second ligand of the spiral arteries is called acute atherosis which is characterized by the aggregation of fibrin platelets and lipid laden macrophages also called lipophages now where does acute atherosis take place acute atherosis is seen in the intramyometrial segment of the spiral arteries in the central bed the uh, the basal arteries and decidual parietalis but is not seen in the intradecidual vessels of the placental bed which have undergone physiological changes now what is the outcome of acute atherosis these lesion partly or completely block the affected blood vessel causing ischemia of the fetal placenta which leads to infarct patchy necrosis and intravascular damage intracellular damage to the syncytiotrophoblast and the two spiral arteries uh, pathology of the placent of the preeclampsia results in reduced uteroplacental blood flow affecting fetal growth now recent views about its path pathophysiology in addition to the changes which I have explained to you recently it has been suggested that um, there is also incomplete development of the feto fetal placental microvasculature in the preeclampsia okay so that was some discussion about the pathophysiology of hypertension in pregnancy you can study 